What is going on today? It's Black Bond. Welcome back to the channel. And once again, we are going to be talking about CD Projekt Red, or as I'm now referring to them as Clapace Project. But before we get into that, just want to let you know, be sure to check out the channel, check out the recent cyberpunk videos, check out the video, my PC is a lawnmower. Be sure to check out the Wolf Will podcast members, including myself, Broken Games HD, Jack Move Johnny, Kid Smooth, Jimmy B Gaming, Blandless, aka Blandrew, and even Mocha has joined the fray, and she's aboard now. If you want to support the podcast, you want to get into those awesome, amazing After Darks that also include Mocha, because I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you gentlemen have plenty of questions to ask the Mocha, and you know, being the only woman, sometimes I feel like she's the only one that can give you proper feedback. So that's something you want, that's something you want to hear, that's something you want to discuss, be sure to check out the After Dark on Patreon. Likewise, our last episode on What We Will Podcast, Sundays at 6.30, if you're interested, was Cyberpunk 2077 and the Game Awards. And unfortunately, BG was right. So, let's get into this topic. The cost of fixing Cyberpunk 2077 is irrelevant compared to restoring the company's reputation. This is a lie. This is a fabrication. This is nothing but a PR statement. Because if the cost was irrelevant, they would have delayed the game. They would have. But the cost was highly relevant. Hence, they launched the game before Christmas, before Hanukkah, during the holiday season. This is a complete bullshit line. Oh, the cost of fixing it is irrelevant. Well, actually, no, I take that back. It could be irrelevant via them already making all their money on pre-orders and current game sales. They've already sold 8 million plus. It could be 9, 10 million right now. So yeah, if they've already made all of their money, then you're right. The cost could be irrelevant. But in my opinion, the cost isn't irrelevant because if it was irrelevant you wouldn't have released the game in its current state. You would have delayed it. CD Projekt Red discussed the future of the company in new emergency board call. Oh, Lord. The cost of fixing Cyberpunk 2077 fixes is irrelevant compared to restoring the company's reputation. According to Stranscribe's minutes of chat, CD Projekt Red revealed its plans for the future and addressed the current situation surrounding the controversial PS4 and Xbox One launch of Cyberpunk. When asked about the cost of patching the game on consoles, member of the board said the cost of patching the game is irrelevant compared to what we have at stake at the moment. So there is no question about it. We definitely want to fix the game. We made our promise to gamers and we will be doing everything to fix it. No, no, no. You made your promise to gamers and you released a broken product. You did not promise us a broken product. You promised us a game that would leave greed to the other corporations. You promised us a game like The Witcher 3. You promised us an epic. But you gave us a game that leaned towards the corpo side of other greedy corporations. The exact opposite of what you claimed you would do. So, there's really not much more that I can say about this situation. They're talking about how their reputation is so important, right? If you valued your reputation, or if you valued your reputation over the dollar like you claimed, you would not have released this game in the state. Period. Period. Because I'll tell you what, once you destroy your reputation, you can't get it back. They could come back two months from now and release this game in a perfectly flawless state. That will not restore their reputation. 
They lied about the game running well on last generation consoles. They misconstrued us talking about how they leave greed to others. They lied about reviews by giving people B-roll footage and not letting them use their own. They did not let people review the last generation console versions or even the current gen console versions upon the launch of the game. They only allowed people to review the PC version from what I've been hearing. I may be wrong about that, so my double check me. But you cannot restore your reputation. If you are dating somebody or you're in a relationship and you're married to somebody and that person cheats on you, they lie to you, they deceive you, they take you for granted, they destroy the relationship. They can't just come back and say, oh, well, I'll be a good guy or I'll be a good woman, I'll be a good husband, I'll be a good wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, I'll make it up to you, I'll regain your... Tr no! It's already done. It's over. Owari da. You cannot come back. Name me one company that had a good reputation, then got a bad reputation, and then became a good reputation again. I can't name one company in the history of gaming. I can't name one. Not one. Not Nintendo. Not Sony. Not Microsoft. Hmm. Yeah, I can't, I can't name one. I cannot, Bethesda, I cannot name one company that destroyed their reputation and then regained trust. The only company you can actually consider that is Sega. But guess what? They didn't put out any more consoles after the Dreamcast and the Saturn, now did they? This game's got me pissed. What's got me pissed off even more is I was really looking forward to this game, but everybody, if you're a gamer, you need to refund this game immediately. But what's got me more pissed is we have people out here defending this bullcrap, making excuses for this bullcrap, saying, oh, it's not that bad, or well, it's, it's a you problem. Unbelievable. Imagine if I said, you know, injustices amongst the black community aren't a big deal. Because I've never experienced them. And if you got beat down by the cops, or you got wronged as a woman, or anything else happened in your personal life, you know what? That didn't happen to me. I'm going to pull a BG and say, that's a you problem. Absolutely insanity. Insanity. Oh, but it's the fans' fault. They wanted the game out, and they would have got pissed if the game would have got delayed. <sighs> Who set the release date? Did the, did the fans set the release date for the game? If I go into work, my boss, I tell him the project will be due January 2021, next month. Let's just say that. I, sir, the project will be done January of 2021. Six months go by, it's delayed. Seven months go by, it's delayed. It's delayed, 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 delayed. Now I got an angry boss. Now I got a delayed project. Now I got consumers that aren't getting the product that they want. Is it the consumer's fault? No. It's my fault because I set the release date. And you know what? Maybe if I said it was going to be due by next month, I also have to take into account the scope of the ambition of the project. You can't want to do something by next month when it's going to take six months of work. Working out takes time, dedication, perseverance, and continuous work. I can't just say, you know what? By next month, I want to drop 30 pounds and just be a lean, mean machine. I want abs. I want a six-pack. I want guns. I want to be looking like Brian Cage on AEW. I can't do that in a month. It's impossible. Oh, my goodness. When people talk about it, I'm not keeping it real. I'm a CD Projekt show. If I see any of you idiots posting that crap on Weapon Wheel, on Twitter, or on my channel, 
you will be blocked immediately. I don't play these kinds of games. This is the biggest gaming disaster since Arkham Knight. If I'm Microsoft, I'm thinking about suing CD Projekt Red. I paid all this money to advertise a product, to feature a game and a product on my platform, the Xbox, the P whatever you want to call it. I paid for it. I paid for something and it comes out not even working. I paid for something and now people are trying to refund it in droves. Now, unless Microsoft said, too bad, we paid for it, you have to release it, then yes, they should sue CD Projekt Red. And the reason I say this is this. They paid for a bunch of advertising and media and all kinds of things for Halo Infinite, but they pushed back Halo Infinite. So I have a hard time believing that they would push back Halo, but wouldn't push back Cyberpunk, despite probably paying a lot more money for Halo. They need to sue CD Projekt Red. They need to sue them. The product that they went to advertise, the product that they paid for, the product that they sunk money into for marketing did not come out to standards. If it was an average game, cool. If it was a bad game, fine. But the fact of the matter is, it was a game that does not functionally work. We're not talking about is the game good or is the game bad? We're talking about does the game work? And the answer is no. No, the game doesn't work. Oh, but it works, Bond. It runs. It just crashes every now and then. You know what? Imagine buying a car in the same vicinity of Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, well, you know, the engine might cut off every now and again. The brakes may not work. Your lights might turn off automatically. The battery, you know, and the transmission could go in and out. The tires, you know, the... Uh... Come on, people. That's some damn common sense. These companies are trying to start selling us games at $70. And this is the kind of crap that's coming out from apparently one of the most revered and consumer-friendly companies in gaming. If CD Projekt Red can do this to us, you don't think anybody else is going to do it or try? Y'all need to wake up.